We will take your temperature. And hand sanitizer is available. We do realize that this has been a very, very difficult, stressful, and oftentimes traumatic time for everyone during this COVID-19 pandemic. We understand that many of you choose not to wear a mask. It's your choice. But for whatever reason you choose not to wear a mask, regretfully, we cannot admit you into our in-person worship. But you can join us at the 1045 AM service through our website, on Zoom, and on Facebook. So with that being said, let's go in, locate a seat, and settle in for our worship service. As you can see, we will continue to maintain social distancing. Select pews are roped off, and placards are spaced on available pews indicating where to sit. Now we invite you to sit back and get ready for an amazing worship experience with our choir, musicians, and a dynamic word from our pastor, the Reverend Dr. James H. Harris, Sr. We hope that we've given you the information to help keep you safe here at St. James AME Church. Should you have any additional questions or need more information, follow us online at stjamesampgh.org or call our church office at area code 412 441 Nine seven zero six. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to St. James AME Church here at 444 Lincoln Avenue in the East Liberty section of the city of Pittsburgh, where the Reverend Dr. James H. Harris Sr. is our pastor. We welcome you back to our church home after a long absence. If this is your first time joining us, we are excited that of all the churches you could have visited, you chose to join us. Everyone, come on, let's go in. Oh, but before we go in, I have to remind you that masks are required. You don't have one? No worries. Once inside the foyer area, one of our church officers will be happy to give you a mask. Let's go inside. To ensure that you and everyone has a safe worship experience, we ask that you show your COVID-19 vaccination card. We will take your temperature. And hand sanitizer is available. We do realize that this has been a very very difficult, stressful, and oftentimes traumatic time for everyone during this COVID-19 pandemic. We understand that many of you choose not to wear a mask. It's your choice. But for whatever reason you choose not to wear a mask, regretfully, we cannot admit you into our in-person worship. But you can join us at the 1045 AM service through our website, on Zoom, and on Facebook. So with that being said, let's go in, locate a seat, and settle in for our worship service. As you can see, we will continue to maintain social distancing. Select pews are roped off, and placards are spaced on available pews indicating where to sit. Now we invite you to sit back and get ready for an amazing worship experience with our choir, musicians, and a dynamic word from our pastor, the Reverend Dr. James H. Harris, Sr. We hope that we've given you the information to help keep you safe. How many people glad to be back in the sanctuary this morning? Oh, we just thank God that we're able to be here because it's been a long time and so many of you I miss and we missed while we were doing this virtually. But can we just praise God again that we're here in the sanctuary one more time to give God praise. Amen. It's a blessing because there's some people through this pandemic season 
who were not able to come back. Some people that I'm looking out here to see, I don't see this morning because they weren't able to be here, but they are looking down on us from heaven on high. Right. And we praise God for that. And we remember their legacy and everything that they've done in their lifetime to be sure that they helped us along in a spiritual way. So we're asking if you would join in with us with praise and worship this morning. I know we haven't done this in a while, but how many people understand that we need to start off the worship experience with praise and worship so we can get into the spirit of God? But God calls us to that. Glory, glory. Yeah. 
thank God for this brand new day. Yes. We welcome you to the first official Sunday of in-person worship. Amen. And we welcome those viewers who are yet still on Zoom and Facebook. The Bible simply says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. And we've come to do that in person. We've come to do that through social media. We've come to do that because God has been good. Now we're still going to keep our service a little shorter than normal, but that's all right. Doesn't take all day to praise the Lord. We can praise God in spirit and truth, and then we can go about living our lives in a Christian way. It's good to hear you this morning. It's good to see you this morning. It's good to be able to put faces in your mind and to give God glory. Tell you how good it is. It's so good, Richard got on pink socks. That's how good it is today. And I don't know about you, I got my booster the other day, my shoulder, oh man, oh man, I feel like somebody hit me with a sledgehammer, but I got my booster the other day, but I thank God I might not be able to raise this right one, but I can raise this left one. Hello, somebody. We praise God for what we can do, not what we cannot do. And I don't know about you, but Drew, can you just hit me a little bit of glad to be in the service? One more time, you've been waiting to get here, you've been praying to get here, you've been asking to get here, and today you are here. So be glad to be in the service one more time. Yeah. 
How many people glad to be in the service this morning? He didn't have to let us live, but we are glad to be here. One more time. Come on and give God a great praise, St. James. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You know. Amen. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here. When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in our courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the gates of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Together, O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Amen. We're so blessed this morning to have our voices of praise choir. We thank God for them. They're going to lift up the Lord in song. We'll sing, we'll sing a hymn. We'll sing a hymn Lord, later on. Amen. We'll sing a hymn. I know you need to hear a hymn. Amen. It's coming. Amen. Just wait for it. It's coming. But right now the choir is going to sing. Pray for them that they will lift up God in song. Destroys every yoke. 
spirit of the living God to fall fresh on each and every one of us. This morning as we approach the throne of grace, we are lifting up all the churches in the Third Episcopal District that are opening up for in-person worship, in worship today. We pray against all voter suppression efforts and efforts against women's rights. We pray against all gun violence and killings in our community, and we pray for peace in our streets. Yeah, yeah. We rejoiced this past That's Tuesday, awesome. learning that the city of Pittsburgh now has its first African-American mayor. And so we lift up our dear brother, Mayor-elect Mayor Ed Ganey. We lift up the mothers of the church, Mother Alma Burgess, Mother Essie Jones, Mother Edwina Coleman, Mother Yvonne Peaks, Mother Vivian Davis, lift up the Reverend Maureen Cross Bolden, lift up Mother Eva Lowe and Mother Edith Spencer. We lift up some of our church members, Brother Andy Coleman, Brandon Wade, Frankly, Russell Bow, Jordan Fair, Talmadge Neal, Mac Wade, Dr. Sylvia Wade. Lift up Sister Judy Lewis, Licentiate Monica Jackson, Darren West, Larry Moore, and the Reverend James Moore. We lift up uh, Brother Paul and his daughter Carly, we lift up uh, Freda Hill, Brother Harold Heim, Diane Jones, uh, Juanita Fulton Phillips, Dr. Lawrence Davis, uh, Sister Elise Yanders. Lift up the Alexander family, Brother Carl Lane and family, Sister Barbara Murphy, Sister Kaylin Ford, uh, Robin Griffin, uh, and Brother Aaron Harrison, and the son of Sister Stephanie Drake. Yeah. Lift up our online prayer requests, uh, Sister Michelle Sanders, Alexandra Real, Linda Dorsey, Samuel Jackson III, Erica Mosby, Tunisia Johnson, Jeff Lalonde, C. Avery, and Maya Ann, brother William Hahn. Let us pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. O thou in whose presence our souls do take delight, on whom in affliction we call, yes. our comfort by day and our song in the night, our hope, our salvation, our all. Oh God, on another communion Sunday morning, we've come as humble as we know how, just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for last night's rest and this morning's rising. Thank you, God, for your angels of love that uh, washed over us as we slept. And thank you for touching us this morning and waking us up in our right mind. Thank you for food in our uh, uh, homes and, 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 and clothes on our backs. Thank and thank you, God, for giving us enough sense on this Sunday morning. Whether or not we're in the sanctuary, whether we're in our homes or in our kitchens or in our bedrooms, thank you for giving us enough sense to gather in the virtual sanctuary to give praise and honor to your name. So now, God, as we move through this worship experience, we ask that you would be in the midst of it as we sing, as we pray, as we read scripture, as your manservant comes to proclaim what thus saith the Lord from this sacred desk. Give him a word, God, that will prick our hearts and make us feel like we can go on. Now, God, especially we thank you for the opportunity that we have today to approach the Lord's table and partake in the Lord's Supper. Yes. 
And as always, God, we ask that as we approach the Lord's table, that we would not approach uh, the communion as pigs before their slop, but rather as sheep before their shepherd. Yes, we ask God that you would forgive us of all of our sins, yes, every sin that we knew we committed and sins we might not even know we've committed. Yes, yes. And we ask that you would cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. And when it's all said and done, God, we'll give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise that is due your great and excellent name. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer and the people of God said, amen. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning will be coming from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 25 through 28. Again, that is Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 25 through 28. And the word of the Lord says, Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest entered the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that, the judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and understanding of his holy word. Thank you. Amen and good morning, church. God loves everybody. But what he loves about a cheerful giver is they get it. They get the connection between the spiritual growth and the generosity. They get that giving itself is a blessing unto the giver. They get it. Not that those who aren't in the position to give don't get it, but there are far more of those who can and don't, and those who think they can, but probably could. To both of you, God says, I love a cheerful giver. So this morning, the question is, do you get it? Do you get it? Or are you a cheerful giver? We here at St. James invite you to be a cheerful giver and giving to God's ministry here that we have and we will continue to bless God's people. You can give through our app. You can give through Givelify. If you need to send it in the mail, that's fine too. For those of you who are worshiping with us this morning in the sanctuary, there are plates to my right and to my left that you can drop your envelope in and continue to be a cheerful giver. Just make sure, just like Nike says, just do it, do you get it? Amen. Right. Right. 
And as we prepare to give, we ask God's blessings upon the gifts, the tithes, and the offerings. Gracious God, we come to give of your own because you have blessed our lives. We give our finances through the offering and the tithes, but we also give our time and our talents. Bless every giver, God. Bless those who have continually given during this pandemic moment and allowed our church to stay afloat. We praise God for the blessings of the people. Now, God, bless all who have and bless those who have not. In Jesus' name we pray. You can't. as sure as you are living and just as sure as you are living as you are living and the Lord is in heaven on high on high the more you give the more you give the more he gives just keep on giving, just keep on giving, because it's really true. You can't beat God's giving. You can't beat God's giving. No. I just want to let you know every Friday Vivica comes by my house, knocks on my door, hands me an envelope for the offering, and I praise God for giving. Amen. A few announcements this morning. The steward board is going to meet this coming Tuesday virtually. You should have received a Zoom invitation by email. If you have not received that, please contact the office tomorrow and we'll be very happy to get you the information. But we will meet at 6.30 on this coming Tuesday evening uh, to deal with organizational business as we begin this new conference year. This week, the third district planning meeting will take place in person in Columbus, Ohio at the Renaissance Hotel and will be there from the 11th through the 13th. All of those persons who were scheduled to be ordained over the past two years are going to be ordained that Thursday evening at 6.30, and then we will take care of the business of the district. The YPD will be there, the missionaries will be there, the laity will be there, all of the components will be there sharing in this planning meeting. Please keep our bishop and our district in your prayers. I want you to know St. James is blessed. We just received a $4,000 grant from the American Heart Association, amen, <clears throat> to begin again our food distribution. And we're going to have some collard greens, hello somebody, and some celery and tomatoes and all of those things to add to our, our diets that we praise God for. We're going to begin this uh, December 9th, the second and fourth Thursdays as we did before. I need my volunteers to plan on being there. Tell your husband, amen. December 9th, we're going to begin. The truck will drop off, and then we'll distribute at 12 noon. But we're blessed to have a $4,000 grant from the American Heart Association. And this time, we are blessed to have enough produce and food for 250 families. And I praise God for that. So we need your help, we need your prayers, and I thank God for the assistance that we've been given. Uh, Sister Jan has been a great blessing to us and all of those who have been a part of this food ministry. Trustees, I'm gonna meet with you next Tuesday, the 14th at 6.30. Your invitations will be coming out this week, so uh, look at your email. Uh, Jackie will be giving you the call-in number, amen. But please wait for the communication. Trustees will meet next Tuesday, the 14th. The Stewart Board is going to meet this coming Tuesday, November 9th. Well, I was at a birthday party yesterday for my great-granddaughter. And she ran me raggedy at Fun City. She turned five 
on the 3rd of November, and you think she was 55, the way she talks to her pop-pop, amen. But I'm so happy to say happy birthday to her and to all of those in our church family, Ian Brown on the 1st, Jacob Morrow on the 4th, uh, Mar Marla Clayton on the 5th. Did, uh, did Clayton get you something? Uh-oh. Mother Hazel Jackson, amen, on the 5th. Happy birthday, Mama Hazel. Daphne Austin, I sent her a Facebook birthday greeting and she responded, thank you, Pastor, amen. Uh, she was on the 6th. LaRue Cook on the 6th. Derek Davis on the 6th. Uh, my daughter, Keisha York on the 10th. Sharice Jones, I didn't forget it this time, amen, on the 8th. Chanel Wright on the 12th. Robert Simpson, amen, on the 12th. Uh, Kirk Webster on the 15th. I'm sorry, the 14th for Brother Simpson. Kirk Webster, the 15th. Carolyn Peaks, the 16th. Nyara Creighton, the 23rd. Lamai Cross, the 23rd. Darlene Montgomery, the 29th. Willie Murphy, the 30th. And the Reverend Brenda Montgomery on the 30th. We say happy birthday to all of our celebrants. If you didn't send us a picture, we're going to have our uh, portfolio up next Sunday. You still got time to send us a picture. It could be a baby picture. It could be a current picture. But we want to put together a birthday portfolio so we can show you off. Amen. Because God has given you another year of life, another year of blessing, and another moment to celebrate who you are in the Lord. And if you're celebrating an anniversary during November, let us know. We say happy anniversaries to all of those who got married. And if you want to get married this November, we got turkeys to give away. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But if you need to get married, call us. We'll be very happy to join you together in holy matrimony. Well, I want to say happy birthday to all of our birthday celebrants. Come on, Howie. Put me in a key. <laughs> Happy birthday to you I just love Howie Alexander. He puts that jazz flavor to the music and ends us on the right tone every time. Amen. Uh, please remember, if you haven't sent us in a picture, please do so. Brother Andre will be very happy to include you in our portfolio as you celebrate. Cake is good. Amen. Blowing out a candle, that's what you want to do. That's fine. That's right. But somewhere in your celebrating, bow your head, Jesus. close your eyes and thank the Lord. Because the Bible declares all our help comes from the Lord. And God has keeping power. Somebody said to me the other day, you look good for your age. I wanted to tell them black don't crack, but then I looked at myself, oh, I better not say that, amen. But I told them God is good. And God takes care. And we celebrate God. You might as well have fun in life. Life is too short to be serious. You get wrinkles in your forehead. Laugh. Have fun. Enjoy. And God bless you real, real good. I want to thank God for the people that God has surrounded St. James with. Surrounded this pastor with. Monica, Richard, Andrew, Andre, Clayton, Harold, Howie, Ken, my singing trios and my men who sing on the third Sunday. You've blessed me to keep on praising God in a time when people said you need to shut down and shut in. All right. But we've come this far by faith. 
I thank God for people and the people that God puts in my life. You need to thank God for the people God puts in your life. Because it's a terrible thing to be alone and to not have people to depend upon and people that you know got your back. I know Clayton got my back. Harold, well, I'm just kidding. I know my staff, Reverend Maureen Crossbow, I, I, I know y'all have my back. And it's a good feeling to know Amen. that not only can you lean on the Lord, but you can lean on those God has put around you. So the choir is going to come and sing. And I'm going to attempt to preach. If you pray, and if they sing, something about to happen in here. Hello, somebody. If you pray, and they sing, something's going to happen in here. If you pray and they sing, I went to a meeting one night and my heart wasn't right, but something got a hold of me. Yes, it did. Come on, choir. Lift up the Lord, pray for the preacher, and may God's name be praised.
us strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. So I thank you for the blood because he would not come down from the cross to save himself. But he decided to die to save people just like me. Now, God, help me to lift up your word. Speak to our hearts, both those in person and those virtually, that we might live our lives pleasing in your sight. And as we share in this communion Sunday, forgive us our transgressions and help us to forgive those who have wronged us in life. Now, God, speak to me, speak through me, and more than anything else, speak in spite of me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This morning, I invite your attention to the 92nd Psalm, Psalm 92. Psalm does not have chapters. Amen. So preachers don't know you'll be able to talk about reading from the 92nd chapter. That's wrong. Psalms has numbers. It's a hymn book of the Jewish faith. And we read from that 92nd Psalm. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises under thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. I want to talk about for a few minutes today It pays to be thankful. It pays to be thankful. As we now find ourselves in the month of November, which celebrates in a few days a day that we call Thanksgiving, it's good for people to get ready to say thank you. It's a good thing. When people can express their gratitude and joy in what God has done for them throughout their lives. Let me remind you today that God has kept you through all of these months of COVID-19. And all of these struggles with people who have lost their lives to this dreaded disease. God has kept you when others have fallen dead because of this pandemic, God has kept you. And the thing about it, you did not deserve it, but he did. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It's good to look back, see where you were, 
Realize where you are. Look back and remember the tragedies and the issues that you have faced and understand that you got over somehow. I don't know how, but I got over somehow. What does that song say? Somehow I made it. It's good to reflect over God's goodness. But you cannot just do it one day out of the year. You must reflect on God's goodness. What does the scripture say? In the morning and at night, you must reflect on the goodness of God and say thank you. Because the Lord has kept you. I had my kids laughing this week. I got up early one morning, about five in the morning, and I walked through the house singing. It's another day that the Lord has kept me. It's another day that the Lord has kept me. Somebody hollered downstairs, hush, shut up, be quiet, we're sleeping. I said, it's another day, it's another day. It's another day, it's another day, it's another day that the Lord has kept me. We must show gratitude to God. Not because it's the fad or the thing to do, but because when you say thank you to God, then you give God credit for your life, for your well-being, for all that you are. And in giving God credit, God blesses your life even the more. Yeah. yeah. Gratitude is what I'm talking about. Showing appreciation to the Lord. Telling God that you are blessed and you realize where your blessings come from. It's good. It's good. It's the right thing to do. It's something that the children of God should always be mindful of. That the Lord has blessed them and the Lord has kept them and the Lord has made a way for them. When everybody else said there is no way. It's a good thing. Good thing is a good thing. It's a great thing. And it pays when you say thank you. God doesn't need your praise, but you need to praise God. Let me say that again. God doesn't need your praise, but you need to praise God. You can't add one bit of holiness or divinity to God by saying thank you. But you can make yourself into the person God wants you to be. Amen. See, the days of believing in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and all those things, that's gone. That's when you were a child. When I was a child, I acted like a child. I did childish things. But now that I'm grown, that's what Paul says, I stopped playing with God. I started getting serious with God and I learned how to say thank you. It's a good thing. After Jerusalem had returned from captivity, after God had delivered them, the leaders of the church told them, every time you praise God, sing this song. Every time you have worship, let this song be heard. It's a song that Israel needed to be reminded of God's goodness. And today, I want to remind you before you get to the holiday, I want to remind you before the family shows up and before you take off from your job, before you travel on your trips, I want to remind you that Thanksgiving is not one day out the year, but every day is a day of Thanksgiving. And we are to learn how to give God thanks. You've been waiting to get in this sanctuary. <laughs> You've been struggling and praying, waiting to get back in this sanctuary. You've been asking us, when are we going to open up for worship? You've been calling and emailing and messaging. When are we going to get back in the sanctuary? Well, you are here today. You are able to walk in the door. You are able to see the windows and sit in the pew. You ought to be ready to say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You've been praying, you've been wanting it, and God has allowed it to happen. 
Yeah, we had a foretaste of glory divine back in August, but we had to shut down again. But here we are trying it all over. It's good to give thanks unto the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say, thank you, Jesus. I know it was hard for some of them to say because they're not used to saying it. Yeah. I know it's difficult for you to form the words out of your mouth because it's not a daily practice. But if you start saying it every day, every night, every morning, every time your children go to school, every time they come back home safe, hello somebody, if you start saying it, every time you go to your jobs and every time you leave your job and every time you get that paycheck from that job, if you start saying it, thank you Lord, you'll become accustomed to praising God. Because it pays to be thankful. First of all, it pays to be thankful because when you're thankful, your burdens get lighter. Huh. Burdens are not an equal opportunity instrument. Everybody's burdened. Everybody has a load that they carry. Everybody has something that they deal with. And the Bible enforces this by saying, people are born full of trouble. And trouble, like the song says, is on every side. No one is exempt, no one can get out of it. You will live with burdens every day of your life and you better learn how to lighten your load. Bible says, take your yoke, take my yoke upon me. Learn about me for my burdens are light. Hello, somebody. We need to understand that when you thank God, your burdens are easier to carry. When you thank God, you're not focusing on what's wrong, but you're focusing on who can make things right. When you thank God, you're not going around saying, woe is me. You're going around saying, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed. Yeah, your burdens. Your burdens get lighter. And when your burdens get lighter, that's a payment God gives you that you can't get anywhere else. Being thankful helps you deal with ugly people. Hello, somebody. You know, people that don't speak, people that roll their eyes, people that cut you off, People to take your parking space. Lady took my space the other day going in, John, you, I almost got mad, but then I held my peace and God gave me a closer parking space. And when I got out the car and she was passing by, I said, <laughs> I wasn't rubbing it in, I was saying thank you. Because God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Learn how to live with your trouble. Learn how to live with your issues. Learn how to live with the stuff that has you bound. But learn that it can be a lighter load if you just learn to say thank you. I thank you for my valleys. I thank you for my mountains. I thank you for what you brought me through. Oh, church, it's good. And it pays off to say thank you to the Lord because it lightens your burdens. Secondly, it enlarges your spiritual capacity. If you are thankful, then your potential becomes unlimited. If you're thankful. If you are thankful, There is no parameter around you. All things are possible because you believe. If you are thankful, there is no fence denying you access to where God wants you to go. For your steps are ordered by the Lord and the Lord is a wall tearing down kind of God. God will tear stuff down to get you to where you need to be in the Lord, yeah. Your capacity is enlarged. I know you thought you couldn't pray, but if you just start saying thank you, you'll learn how to pray. Hello somebody. 
I know you think you can't sing, but if you start being thankful, you'll sing anyhow because you're happy. Hello, somebody. It enlarges your capacity. What you can do becomes greater. And Jesus said, greater things you will do than I have done. We must give God thanks because in thanking God, we create unlimited potential. And when I'm unlimited, I can do anything the world throws in my life. I can handle anything that might come my way. When my potential is increased, there's nothing too hard for me and God. Hi, Reverend. Yeah. Thank you pays off because it lightens your burdens and it enlarges your spiritual capacity. And then lastly, being thankful to God huh, strengthens you for what lies ahead. I don't know how we made it. Yeah. With the price of chicken wings. <laughs> With the price of gas. Now they're telling us that the water bill's going up. Taking care of stuff they ought to be paying for, not us. Hello. I don't know how we made it. Yeah. Families being infected. Families going through grief. I don't know how we made it. Church is struggling to stay afloat, depending on Givelify, PayPal, Cash App, the mailman woman. I don't know how we made it. Oh, yes, I do. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, it's given us strength to deal and handle with anything God throws our way. Yeah. I'm stronger. I'm better. I'm wiser. Y'all didn't hear me. I'm stronger. I'm better. I'm wiser. Because I learned that saying thank you pays off. How does it pay? Somebody said when the praises of God go up, blessings come down. How does it pay? The more you give, the more God gives to you. How does it pay? When you lift up a prayer, God answers that prayer. And he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. It pays to be thankful. It gives you a sense of confidence that there's nothing the world can do to you because you belong to God. Yes, I could hear the old church singing, I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. And then I heard somebody sing one day, I think it was in the gospel choir, if anybody asks you who I am, tell them I'm a child of the king. When you give God thank you, the cheeseburger tastes better. <laughs> when you give God thank you, the wig fits a little smoother. When you tell God thank you, the cane is not your only support. When you tell God, thank you, age does not get in your way where you cannot wave your hand and praise the Lord. When you tell God, thank you, huh, had nothing to do with your physique, fellas, or your athletic ability, because can't none of us run. Hi, Brother Davis, God bless you. When none of us run like we used to run. Ain't that right? You heard him, Lisa. Amen. That stuff doesn't get in the way because you understand that the Lord has blessed your life and the Lord has given you full strength and activity of your limbs. I know what the old folks meant when they said, woke me up in my right mind. Amen. I didn't put on a blue sock with a pink sock. Hello, somebody. I didn't put on white pants and purple. You know, I, I got dressed and it all made sense. 
I didn't scramble the bacon and fry the, you know, hello somebody. I was in my right mind. I didn't take the wrong medication, but I took what I'm, hello, I was in my right mind. Thank you, God, for another day in my right mind with reasonable strength. Amen. It pays to say thank you. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. Yeah, that's what the choir used to say. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. Remember that, Aunt May? It prays every step of the way. Yeah, y'all used to sing that song with fervor. Matter of fact, y'all used to sing a whole lot better than you sing now. Because you letting CNN and NCB and all that mess mess with you. Ain't got nothing to do with the president. Ain't got nothing to do with the Democratic or Republican Party. It has to do with God. There is a name above every name. And at that name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he's Lord. Yes, that's the name. That's the name. That's the name we say thank you to. That's the name we give our gratitude toward. That's the name we appreciate at the name of Jesus. Demons flee, sickness leaves, trouble gets out your way, mountains become flat, amen, valleys become level, rough roads become straight. Yes, at the name of Jesus, it's in Jesus' name we woke up this morning. It's in Jesus' name we got activity of our limbs. It's in Jesus' name we're here in this sanctuary. It's in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. We have the victory. Not in Monica's name, or Jimmy's name, or Richard's name, or Andrew's name, but in the name of Jesus. Y'all don't know how much power is in that name, do you? There's power in that name. There's power to wipe your slate clean. There's power to turn your midnight into day. There's power to hold the showers from affecting your life. There's power in the name of Jesus. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power, wonder-working power. Would you or evil, the victory win? Thank you, Lord. There's wonder-working power in the blood. Yeah. You got to learn how to be thankful. Because if you learn how to thank God on Monday... Tuesday will take care of itself. If you learn how to thank God on Wednesday, I said that May the other night, I wish more of our people would come to prayer meeting and get on the line and pray with us. Sometimes it ain't nobody but me and her praying. We pray and we pray. We, we call names. We talk about situations. I wish folk would learn how to pray on Wednesday because then Thursdays wouldn't be so rough. I know the eagle flies on Friday, but if you learn how to pray, the eagle just won't fly. The eagle will soar. Saturday you go out to play Saturday you go out to play Saturday that's what that song said Howie the eagle flies on Friday but Saturday I go out to play but my mama taught me something a long time ago Carolyn, she said, if you can go out on Saturday and party, you can go to church on Sunday morning and party. Huh? They ain't playing the same songs. They're not doing the same stuff. They're not moving the same way. What do you mean I go to church on Sunday and party? She said, you, you, <clears throat> you'll see. As you grow, that stuff will get old and this stuff will get new. As you grow, that stuff will become useless and this stuff will become valuable. As you grow, you'll see that it pays to thank the Lord for every day of your life. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get those chitlins. I can't wait. Amen. To get that. Amen. 
But I got to thank God for the chicken right now. I got to thank God for the hamburger right now. I got to thank God for the Big Mac right now. Hello, somebody. I got to thank God for where I am right now. Tomorrow's not promised to me. I might not live to see it. But if I thank God now, if this earth, the tabernacle would dissolve, I got a building not made by hands, but eternal. If I learn how to say thank you now, I'll know how to say thank you then. Israel, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It's a good thing to sing and shout and participate in worship. It's a good thing to come together to the church and praise God collectively. It's a good thing to gather in your Sunday best and look good for Jesus. It's a good thing, but if that's all you do is on Sunday, then you ain't doing much, but if you learn how to thank God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, life will get sweeter as the years go by. Yeah. It pays to be thankful. Let me give you an example of how God blesses you. I was at a restaurant, Richard, and uh, my server was new. And she kept making mistakes, bringing the wrong stuff. I wanted minestrone soup. And she bought me some other, I don't know what that was. And, uh, I said, thank you, man, for the soup I have, but I really want minestrone. Oh, that's not, I, I'll, I'll be right back. And uh, I wanted salad with no croutons, no olives, no hot peppers. And what did she bring me? Salad with croutons, olives. And I said, miss, uh, thank you, but this is not what I ordered. I didn't want croutons, olives, and hot peppers. And uh, I wanted unsweet tea. And Charlotte, she brought me sweet tea. And I didn't want no lemon. I said, put the lemon on the side. And she dropped the lemon in the glass. But I said, thank you. And after that meal of saying thank you and everything she messed up, I thanked her for everything she messed up. I thanked her for everything she, I thanked her for every mistake she made. I thanked her. I didn't cuss her out. I didn't roll my, I thanked her. At the end of that meal, I said, all right, dear, what do I owe you? She said, it's already been paid. I said, who paid it? I don't know who he was. But he saw me back there, saw you back there, and he said, I'm gonna take care of that gentleman's bill. It's already been paid. Jesus has already paid your price. And because he lives, because he sits at the right hand of God the Father, because the Lord has made a way for you, you don't owe anything but thank you to God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you honor. Lord, it pays, it pays, it pays. It pays, it pays, it pays. Wounded for me, wounded for me, wounded for me, wounded for me, gone my transgressions, and now I am free all because Jesus was wounded. It ain't grape juice, it's the blood of Jesus. It ain't a stale cracker, it's the broken body of Jesus. And I do it to remind myself that he would not come down from the cross to save himself, but he decided to die to save somebody. Thank you, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. I just thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, I just thank you all the days of my life. For when I was sick, Lord, you raised me. When I was sick, Lord, you raised me. When I was sick, Lord, you raised me. Lord, I thank you. It pays to say thank you.
Lord, I thank you, thank you. Yes, Lord, I thank you. I just thank you all the days. I dare you to sing it. I dare you to sing it. Well, Lord, I thank you. Sing it, Lord, I thank you. Come on, sing it. Lord, I thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, because they were falling out and they were being stampeded upon and they lost their life. I wish there was so many people in the church that we would just knock each other over trying to get to, hello, I, 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 I pray. It used to be like that. I don't want nobody to die, but I wish, amen. I know we gotta practice social distancing, but I wish it was full. Yes, sir. So full, like it used to be on Easter morning, we had to put chair. So full one day where the kids had to sit on the altar because there were no seats for them. I wish it was full. Amen. So I need you. God needs you. St. James needs you. We need you to become a part of our family. We need you to become a part of God's family. We need you to forget about what they say and start doing what God says and be thankful. If you want to change the way you live and change the way you walk and change the way you talk and change the way you dress and change the way you look and change the way you move, then you need to learn how to be thankful to God. I want you to put your name in the chat. I want you to send that message. I want you to give us a call this week. If you're here this morning, walk down the aisle, wave your hand, jump up and move, let somebody know you've made up your mind to follow Jesus from this point on. Because uh -huh. you're tired of living a life not saying thank you, waiting for Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Amen. They burn the turkey, waiting for thanks. Hello, somebody, waiting for Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And nobody invites you to the house dinner and waiting for Thanksgiving. There's a feast right here that God wants you to be a part of. And all you got to do is say, I believe in your Lord. And the Bible says your soul will be saved. As the choir sings, as we stand all throughout the church, I want you to think about, have you been thankful to the Lord? I want you to ask yourself a question. Have you said thank you enough to the Lord? I want you to understand if you had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be adequate to give God the real praise that God deserves. But at least you try to say thank you. If you want to walk down this aisle, wave your hand, text us, message us, whatever you do, we accept you now. Not because of how you dress or where you live or where you work, but because you've stepped out on faith to ask God to be your savior and your friend. Is there one today? I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 to thank you, Lord, because you've been so good. You've been so good. Every day of my life you've been, you've been so good. so
Sing it to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Feel the power of the Spirit in your life. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Lord's of praise. Thank you. The Steelers ain't playing today, so we got all day to praise the Lord. Amen. Ain't nobody Amen. thinking about the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. We can stay here all day shouting to the goodness of the Lord. We got till tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I got tickled last week when uh, Monica got done preaching and then she got happy. Amen. I said, yeah. The Lord will do you that way. Yeah. I got tickled when she said, I wrote one sermon, but the Lord woke me up that night and gave me another sermon. That's how the Lord will do you, Monica. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. God is a good God. Yes, he is all the time. And now I want you to remind yourself how good God is. All right. In the Emmy Church, every first Sunday, we share in what we call the Holy Eucharist, the Holy Communion. The Bible says as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of Jesus. So we do this to remember the Lord. Yes. I know sometimes the crackers stale. I know sometimes there ain't enough juice to wet your whistle, I know. But that ain't why you're doing it. You're doing it to remember Jesus. I remember I had a little boy once in one of my churches. He bad little boy too. That boy was always in trouble. He came to communion one Sunday. And after he took the first communion, he said, Preacher, can I get another one? I said, no, son, you can't have. He said, why? I said, because we only give one out per person. But I need another one. Why you need another? Because I've been bad in school this week, and I need another one so my mama don't whip me. He knew. He knew. Amen, amen, amen. Do this for the right reason. Do this for giving God praise. Do this and say thank you to God for his life, his death, and his resurrection. Because our God is not on a cross. Our God sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, making intercession for us every day of our lives. Amen. When the world would do us in, Jesus says, save him, Father. Save him, Father. Protect him, Father. So I praise God for Jesus. Turn to somebody just say Jesus. Jesus. No, no. Y'all so sophisticated. Y'all so... <laughs> Turn to somebody and say Jesus. 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 <laughs> Act like you in the number line getting ready to cast that ticket. Say Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I ain't got no sense. I ain't got no sense. I ain't got no sense, but I'm crazy for the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I know it was the blood. I know. It was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day, one day when I was lost. 
cross Jesus and died upon the cross now this morning or this afternoon we're going to do communion a little bit different because communion will be the last thing we do I'm going to consecrate the elements and then I'm going to give the closing prayer and benediction and then I'm going to ask those who are virtually to be ready to take your communion and then we're going to go off of Zoom and off of Facebook and we're going to commune one by one starting on this side Marla coming around as you get your cup and wafer I want you to keep on walking As you get your cup and wafer, I, I don't want you to stop. I want you to keep on walking. Take it home with you. Put your remains in the cup. I, I, but I want you to keep on. We're going to come one by one, section by section. We're going to serve everybody. But we've got to do this so we can maintain proper attitudes and proper restrictions. Now, no kissing. No kissing, no hugging, no shaking hands, fist bump, elbow bump, do the bump. I don't, you know, but no, it's a little bit different. I know you might mess it up today, but don't worry about it. It'll be all right. We're going to get it right. But once you get your communion, you're going to go straight out. And we thank God for it. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for being here. Zoom and Facebook, I love you. Get your elements ready as we prepare now to share in the blood of Jesus. I know it was the blood. I know. On the 22nd of November, Mayor Ed Ganey is going to give away turkeys. His last year doing as state representative at the House of Manor, 22nd. If you need a bird, go see the mayor. Amen. I thank God for his election. I praise God. I've been happy since we elected a brother to lead this city. And I'm praying for him. It's going to be on my prayer list every Sunday because I want him to succeed. Yes. I don't want the devil to mess up his Amen. leadership. Amen. And like grandma said, don't believe nothing you hear and only half of what you see. Hello, somebody. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Let us join together now in the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against our divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. 
The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Consecration, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of thy tender mercy, just give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death of the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his Lord gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we must humbly beseech you, and grant that we receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Holy Institute, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night he was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, gave his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave the disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, this is my blood shed for you. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. The broken body of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I feast upon within my soul and I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful in my heart. <clears throat> the blood that was shed for me way back on Calvary, I take and I drink, and I remember that Christ died for me, and I'm thankful in my heart. And now I go in the mercy, grace, and peace of the Lord, and may the joy of the Lord be my strength. Those who are virtually joining us today, if you would take your elements now, as we have consecrated them, receive the broken body, broken for you, receive the shed blood shed for you. You have renewed your covenant with Almighty God. Go in peace, and as the Bible says, sin no more. May the grace, mercy, and peace of God be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for reminding us that to be thankful pays off. Now, God, help us not only to be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. We praised you, we've lifted you up, now we go out to serve you in a world that does not like you. But we go out to serve anyhow, because we want the world to know that Jesus lives, and because he lives, our futures are brighter. We ask your blessing to be upon this church. All churches open in your name today. All of our membership, our families, our communities. Help us, Lord, in these times of struggling where shootings are being done and murders are being committed and children's lives are being taken from them. A couple buried their baby in the wall of the bedroom. Help us, Lord, that we might be able to let some folk know that it pays to be thankful to the Lord and you don't have to act this way, but there's a better way to living. Now may the grace of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now, henceforth, and forever. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next Sunday, same time. God bless you. Pastor Harris here, thanking you for joining us in worship today. You've been a blessing to us. It's our prayer that we've been a blessing to you. I know that God's going to work miracles in our lives. We just have to pray for one another. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. Watch God change things. God bless you.